Hey guys, welcome to Last Minute Maths again. And in this video, we're going to be looking at factorizing quadratic equations. A um, couple of simple methods that I'll show you in this. It's a very regular question in GCSE papers, and it's something you'll need throughout your GCSE and A levels. So, just a few minutes looking at a couple of methods, show you step by step exactly what to do. And if you find it useful, then do please comment, like, and uh, consider subscribing for my future videos. All right, so with factorizing quadratic equations, we are starting with equations that look like a standard quadratic ax squared plus bx plus c, all right? And we're going to start with the case, the simpler case, which is a equals 1, all right? Now, what does it mean to factorize, okay? We want to break down this whole equation into the product of two linear expressions. So x plus p times, let's say, x plus q. And the whole point of factorization is that you want to find what p and q are. So you can rewrite the full quadratic into these two factors multiplied together. Right? And of course, let's say a equals 1 before anybody comments and says I've got it wrong. Right, now there are two simple rules you need to remember for these basic ones where a equals 1. The middle coefficient, all right, so b, b always equals the sum of those two numbers, the p and the q. And c, the end constant of the quadratic, will always be the product, all right, so you want the sum in the middle and the product at the end, okay? So add the two numbers for b and times, whichever way uh, helps you remember more easily, all right? So let's take an example just to illustrate the point. So I've got x squared minus 15x plus 36, all right? And we are going to find two numbers which multiply to plus 36 and add up, all right, to minus 15. The really important thing here is watch the sign, okay? You need those signs. It's not just 15 and 36. The sign is very important. You can't afford to leave that out. Okay? Right. So, if you're approaching this without having done factorization before, the thing to do is you want factors of 36, right? In your mind or on paper, whatever you want to do, list them all out. So, really going through it rigorously. Now, normally you wouldn't do this, but this is just to show you how to start. Um, 1 times 36, all right, would give you plus 36, and it gives you 37 as a result, the sum, okay? So we don't want that. All right, let me just undo that, actually. So don't want that one. Then minus 36 times minus 1, whichever way around, would give you minus 37. Don't want that. And going down the list, 2 times 18, um, gives you 36, but adds up to 20, etc. So you can go down there and just eliminate all the options, all right? And then you get to 3 and 12 as being two factors. So remind yourselves that we want a minus 15 as our result. So this first one, 3 and 12, plus 3 plus 12, not going to work, all right? So you put that there. They're not going to work. But minus 3 and minus 12... Right, will add up to minus 15. That is the solution we want. Okay, So those go straight into your factorized version. So we can then say that x squared minus 15x plus 36 can be written as x minus 3, all in brackets, times x minus 12. All right? And that will multiply out. And I'll just illustrate the point, actually. If you're not sure, double check by actually multiplying out very quickly. So you've got x squared 
minus 12x minus 3x plus 36 and that comes to x squared minus 15x plus 36. So there we are, double checked and it's correct. Okay, so that whole process, doing that quickly in your head in an exam, I'll just give you another example. So x squared plus 16x minus 36 this time. Okay, so again, real time, minus 36. If you know your factors, times tables, we want all sorts of different factors. You can do 4 and 9, you can do 3 and 12 again, um, 1 times 36, etc. In this case, the ones we want are minus 2 and plus 18. Give you minus 36, so that's fine. On the other side, minus 2 plus 18 give you plus 16. So that's the combination we want. X minus 2 plus sorry, x plus 18, right, multiplied together. So the whole thing is all about knowing your factors. I.e. times tables. I know, sounds um, a little bit basic, but that's really all it is. No special magic involved. Right, this next step, when a does not equal 1, okay? Um, and I'll show you a step-by-step -step method. It's called the decomposition method in some books. There we are. And you'll see in a moment why it's called decomposition method. Right, so we're going to start with 4x squared plus 5x minus 21, all right? And we're going to attach the labels, as we always do, a general quadratic, with coefficient of x squared is 4, that's a, all right? So we're labeling them a, the coefficient of x is b, and the, curve, well, the constant at the end, c, all right? So, um, step one, all right? Find a times c. All right. In this case, it's 4 uh, times minus 21. And I should put brackets around this, actually, just to make it clearer what I've written. So 4 times minus 21. Again, remember the sign. That is the whole point of this. Right? Do not forget the signs. So 4 times minus 21, minus 84. All right. The next step, step 2. Okay, we want factors of minus 84, which then also add up to plus 5. All right, and again, going through your times tables in your head, straight away you should be able to pull out minus 7 times plus 12 gives you minus 84, so that's fine. And minus 7 plus plus 12 is plus 5, so that also satisfies it. Okay. So what we then do is rewrite the equation um, where we break out the plus 5x into those two components. It's these two numbers here all right, that we had. So we're splitting the 5x up into x squared minus 7x plus 12x minus 84. All right. And then what we take is each pair of terms there. So let's say the first two and then the second two. We're going to factorize them where possible. So the first one can be rewritten as x times x minus 7. And the second two terms factorized put a 12 on the outside. You can factorize a common term, 12 and 84. Um, have a common factor of 12 there. So take the 12 out and you're left with x minus 7. All right. Notice how the term in brackets, okay, the that one there and that one there. So you've got a common factor of x minus 7 is common. Okay. If 
the terms within the brackets are not the same at this stage, then you've done something wrong and you need to go back and check again. All right. So let me put that in. Terms in brackets. must be same. Okay. Like I said, if they're not, go back and check them. All right. And so what we end up doing is we know that the x minus 7 is common. So we're going to take that to one side and we're left with x and then plus 12 here. All right. So we refactorize that x minus 7 being common. That goes on the outside, and you're left with those two, x plus 12. That is done. That's what's called the decomposition method. The reason it's called decomposition is because we split the 5x. So it's this step here. Yeah, We split the 5x into minus 7 and plus 12. All right? So those basically are the two methods of solving quadratics, all right? And one is where a equals 1, and the second method is where a does not equal 1, all right? So if you have any questions, um, if you need any further detail on that, then please do leave it in the comments, and uh, I'll be doing more example questions on this. And... Uh, you're welcome to tune in and uh, watch that next time. Thank you very much for watching.